We're now going to tie the Flycraft Fullback, probably my favorite suggestive pattern when I'm exploring a new lake or out fishing for the first time on a favorite lake. Here's what you'll need to tie this great suggestive pattern. So let's tie the Flycraft Fullback, the flashback version, my favorite version. Into the jaws of the vise, I've placed a uh, S82-3906B number 10. I tie these from 8 probably down to 12, and 10s and 12s are my most common sizes. I'm going to attach some tying thread, in this case uh, some olive green 70 denier. I'm just going to cover the hook shank with thread, give it a good foundation. And get that good thread base down, and then just to keep myself proportionally correct. I'm just going to move the tying thread up to about the three quarters mark where my thorax will begin and tie in some fine copper wire and secure that down the hook shank. So I'm now going to form a dubbing loop. I'm going to bring the tying thread forward of the hook point, pull down maybe three or four inches of tying thread around my forefinger, bring it back up Close the loop by securing the thread back to the rear of the hook where the wire is and that closes the loop up nice and tight. I only use thread tension to hold my dubbing in place. I don't like to use dubbing wax. So I'm going to use a dubbing tool. In this case I'm going to use the Cal Bird style dubbing tool. really like this type of dubbing tool. It works really well for me. Place that in and then the body can be uh, constructed a variety of materials from peacock curl, but probably my favorite is the uh, Arizona synthetic peacock dubbing. So I'm just going to take a small pinch of this dubbing, place it into the dubbing loop down near the dubbing tool, and then slide it up into position. And I want to continue loading from the bottom of the loop to the top so our materials don't fall in as I open the loop to apply the next batch of dubbing. And I'm just using a little down pressure on the um, dubbing tool itself. I'm just pulling down slightly to keep the thread under slight tension and that will pinch and hold our dubbing in place. And we want to make sure that we have a relatively even application of dubbing throughout the loop. There's no big barren spots. It's pretty well even and consistent all the way through and I'm happy with that. And now we're just going to start spinning slowly and twisting the dubbing loop tight. So it starts to go a bit like a drill bit to start and then as I increase the tempo and uh, obviously the amount of twist the fibers start to radiate out at about 90 degrees just like that. So just before I wind forward I'm going to go through and kind of preen the dubbing if you will and get any clumps that are a little loose and didn't stick in so we make sure that our dubbing is nice and tight there's no um, loose loose fibers are going to get out of the way and that's what we want we have a nice evenly loaded dubbing loop as you can see there so now I'm going to wind the dubbing noodle forward to form the body so we start right at the base of the hook one wrap right in front of the previous wrap going forward. As you go forward you can overlap the wrap slightly to help build in a little taper. We're looking for a real scruffy look to our body. I'm just going to take that forward up to where the tying thread is hanging. So that's about three quarters mark on the hook shank. Let me tie off the dubbing noodle and trim away the excess. And there you have a nice scruffy, scraggly mess. That's one of the reasons I love dubbing loops. If you've got a few long fibers that are bothering you, you can trim them out of the way, but I think they add to the overall scruffy look of the fly and will really add translucency and even gather air bubbles. So now we're going to tie in the shellback, wing case, and tail material all at once. And You might have been wondering where the tail is. I do this a little differently. I tie it a bit like Skip Morris's Skip Nymph. So what I'm going to do is take a clump of pheasant tail fibers and I'm pulling the fibers perpendicular to the stem as you can see got about a dozen or so here and then we're just going to trim them from the stem 
And what that does is you can see how the tips are nice and even. So we're going to take the pheasant tail and I'm sticking it out the back of the of the fly to ensure that the tips protrude about half the shank length beyond the end of the body and that will help form the tail this will form the shell back and this will be blended in to help form our wing case so it's a neat easy way uh, to get everything all at once so to start I'm going to secure this tail in place and the shell back in place using the ribbing so I'm going to take a half a turn so it's straight underneath the shank and this ensures that the first wrap is on the body and not at the rear of the body where it could pinch or even break the tails and we're just going to come over the top and apply down pressure Turn that one errant fiber out of there and I go over the top in a loose controlled wrap and then apply the pressure on the downside this way the um, pheasant tail will be secured straight down on top of the shell back and I'm just kind of weaving this through I've moistened my fingers a little bit and I'm kind of parting the dubbing as I wind through and then we'll come up in front, go around a couple of times and secure the copper wire and then pull and twist or helicopter the wire to break it. There we go. And there you have the body and everything in place. We're going to give this a bit of a more of a brush later and a trim. Now we're going to use some flashback material here and to do that we're going to use one of my favorite materials and that's the medium Mirage opal tinsel in this case uh, for 12s or even 14s if I wanted to go that small I would use the uh, small but this works good for the 10s and 8s the larger sizes and this great little searching pattern so we're going to secure that on top flat and then wind back onto the body slightly and then take our wing case material and fold it back into place on top of the shank and then move the tying thread forward because at this point I'm going to tie in my partridge tackle. A lot of times you'll see flies, there's nothing wrong with it but they tie the fly, sorry, tie the hackle feather right in here at the eye of the hook right near uh, the end of the fly when the thorax is done and there's not a lot of room to really get it secured in and I find from time to time material pulls out. So what I've done is I've selected a partridge feather with the fibers that if possible extend back about three quarters to the body length. It's not uh, too bad to exaggerate it but that's sort of the proportions for the hackle and then I've tied it in wet fly style on top of the hook with the convex side of the feather facing forward or the most prominently marked feather side of the feather facing forward. So when I wind this back to form, wind this rather to form the hackle, those fibers are going to naturally sweep back. And now I have a really secure tie in. And you'll notice too, there's a bit of bare stem right at the front. And this helps me when I wind the hackle um, to aim it. So now we're going to do just like we did for the body, form a smaller dubbing loop, maybe only an inch and a half, two inches max. We're just making a small thorax. And we're going to repeat the process that we did for the body. We're going to form that loop and then take our dubbing tool and just quickly load it here just quickly load the dubbing loop from the bottom, open the loop slide up into position take a pinch of dubbing off and open the loop and into position and again we're trying to build as best we can a nice balanced loop so there's no real barren spots you can if there's any clumps in there you can try and pinch and pull them apart it's always a good idea with any dubbing uh, because it's packaged and stuffed into the bag just to re-blend it if you will pinch it back and forth between your uh, left and right hands and pull it apart and put it back together and that just helps break up any of the clumps that occur from the packaging process just part of the game and then we just spin this tight and as we did on the body, we're going to remove any uh, clumps or any patches that look like they may not be in there tight. So we have a nice, neat dubbing loop. And now we're just going to wind that forward just like we did on the body to help form the thorax. 
And the thorax, you want a little bit thicker than the, the body, but that tends to happen naturally because of the wing case materials and all the other uh, materials we've tied in that add bulk um, to the underbody, if you will, of the fly. And the end result is a natural, uh, scruffy-looking thorax. So now we're just going to take our hackle and wind that. So we take our hackle pliers. But what I like to do is make a positioning wrap, if you will. So I take my hackle and I make a half a turn. Then I attach my hackle pliers. And this ensures that the hackle is not twisted. I want it to wrap perpendicular to the hook. And that most prominently marked or convex side of the feather is facing the front so we can wind this hackle wet fly style. And we're just going to put two to three wraps of hackle. We don't want to overdo it. Usually the feather, whoops, that happens. We just reattach. I always wrap things under tension, so you're almost at the breaking point a lot of times to make sure they're in there nice and secure. So I'm just going to go around like that and then sort of zigzag, weave the thread through the fibers, make sure it's tied down, and then make sure those fibers are all in place. What I like to do is then part the hackle, if you will, on either side to clear a path for the wing case materials. And I'm just going to take my thumb and forefinger and using sweep them down and back and hold them into position. And just take a couple of wraps and they will be secured. And a little pinch along the side helps train and flow soft tackle fibers. That's a beauty. I mean, get that natural sweat back look just with a quick pinch. And now we're going to pull over our wing case materials one at a time. We'll start with the pheasant tail. This mylar wants to get into the party a lot quicker. It will happen. So just a couple of wraps to secure. Two or three there. And we'll trim off the waist and then come over the top. And what you can do is just sort of pull on it and wiggle and it kind of self-centers the mylar, if you will, on top. So I'm going to make it right on top there. And then I like to fold it back to lock it and lock it in place. And all it's left to do is do a quick two or three turn whip finish. I actually like to build the head if I can with the whip finish tool. The tying portion of the Flycraft fullback is done. We have one scruffy buggy nymph. So now we've got to protect that wing case. So to do that, we're going to use a little UV Loon's UV Clear Fly Finish, the original formula. It's fairly thick. And we're going to apply that with a dubbing needle. Put a little dollop, if you will better to have a little than a lot and we're just going to apply that from the head of the fly right along the top and let that settle out again we're covering the tie off area right across the back and let it settle out let any air bubbles that may have got got in there work their way out again just don't be too aggressive when you tap it on and once it sits on top like that and we can come in with the UV light and activate and cure the UV fly finish. It looks great. It really reinforces that pheasant tail shell back, sorry, wing case, and obviously the mylar that's sitting on top of it and really gets it to pop. This is an excellent searching pattern. The Flycraft fullback. Uh, has really worked well. It's one of those flies when you're not sure what to put on. It can imitate a damsel, it can imitate a caddis pupa, a small dragonfly nymph. It's just buggy and looks good to eat and uh, has really performed well for me over the years.
So there you go. Add that to your fly box. It's a great still water searching pattern. I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more information on fly fishing, and in particular still water fly fishing, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. And of course you can always find me on Facebook and Twitter, and join me there in the conversations. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.